Well, have you ever had, now I'm speaking to adults right at this split moment, but also I can speak to children about being the, in this particular condition. Have you ever run into someone who is, and I'm going to use a biblical quote here, stiff-necked and rebellious? How many of you have run into your children who have basically said, No, I don't want to do it. No, 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 no. And start throwing the proverbial temper tantrum. I'm a parent of something said close akin to that. I've also been the one every once in a blue moon throwing a temper tantrum when I remember when I was a kid. I was not always the nice little boy. <laughs> okay, enough of that frivolity for a moment. But we've all dealt with people who have been a royal pain in the neck. People who just don't get what, and I'm speaking now to parents, what you're trying to share with them as a parent. You know, being a parent, you want to share with your children your experiences. You want to share with them, don't do the mistakes that I did, right? Is that what you're trying to do as a parent? Because I hope so. Because you don't, you want the kids to learn from you positively, this is what you don't do. And, neg and we do learn from our parents negatively what we end up doing we shouldn't be doing and they see that so parents this is this is kind of to you to where you need to be the example for your children and now there's a whole nother video that's available right now for parental involvement and you know what uh just like i made a note on another video which i have not yet made but on a on a, another video we'll say par parents video. All right. I'm taping it to the bottom of my computer screen. So it's there in front of my face all day long. So eventually I will get to one of those videos. Now back to the point at hand. We have all had to deal with stiff necked and rebellious people. Now put yourself into the realm of of God for a minute because he's the one who coined the phrase stiff-necked and rebellious when he was dealing with his own chosen people his own nation of Israel the ones who struggled with God and boy did they struggle with him boy do we struggle with him but I'm gonna get to that And they continue to go so far afield, if you remember your Old Testament history, that God allowed them to be removed from the promised land that he promised them. He allowed it to happen because their rebellion was so stiff-necked, so severe, he didn't know what else to do when dealing with unruly children. And that's who they were. They were unruly children. So, what did God do? Well, he removed them from their locale. Finally got their attention long enough that 70 years later, after the last exile of the tribe of Judah into Babylon, 70 years after that, a remnant of that group returned to occupy uh, the promised land. Because it's still, that promise never revoked. It's still the promised land for the nation of Israel. So today we want to continue our discussion. Now, if you remember a few days ago, maybe even closer to a week ago, that we talked about chapters 10 and 11 are building us up to uh, Paul's point on the new nation of Israel. Now he's coming back full circle to talk about the original nation of Israel, the ones who struggle with God. So grab your Bibles, please, paper or electronic, 
And let's turn to Romans chapter 10, the very last verse of chapter 10, and we're going to rock and roll right into 11. Uh, I think we're going to stop today. Uh, oh, there's too much. There's so much. We're going to stop in verse 6 for today. So, but of Israel, meaning the biological nation of Israel, who's the people who struggle with God, he says, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people, also known as stiff-necked and rebellious. I ask then, has God rejected his people? Oh, now that is a loaded, 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 loaded question. Has God rejected his people? I love the word, the phraseology that Paul uses, by no means. That's the next sentence. Or said another way, absolutely, positively, no. I have not rejected my people. Think about that for, for everybody. We're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. We learned that in Romans 3, way back when. We also know that we, too, the new Israel, are also stiff-necked and rebellious. We don't listen very well. We don't pay attention very well. Let's go back to our opening example of parents and children. You know, you gotta, oh, you gotta wonder sometimes. Does God absolutely say, I've had it. I'm done with y'all. No. No. Absolutely, positively not. He has not done that to anybody. Why? Because he sent Jesus. So it, he sent Jesus to be the forgiveness of sins. He sent Jesus to be, here's a big, nice, fancy word for basically forgiveness of sins, propitiation. And he became that sacrifice so that we would be forgiven. It doesn't make a, a hill of beans in relationship to God what we do or what we don't do. We cannot earn our way into God's favor. That was the part of the problem with the Israelites. They thought they could. No, we cannot earn our way into God's favor. We need to, to use a figure of speech, but it's not clear enough, trust. God to provide the forgiveness. And when we believe and when we trust God to provide the forgiveness, which he did and continues to do in Jesus Christ, told to us by the Holy Spirit through the word that we are studying right now, we will be saved. We will be absolutely, positively, without a doubt. We will be and we are saved. So God has not rejected his people. He's not left us alone. So whoever has said to you, well, you're on your own, think again. You have never been on your own. God is always with you. So why is there sin in the world? Because people just flat out don't listen to God. It's not that he's left us alone. We have left him. Human race has left God. So for the select few of us, the remnant, using an Old Testament terminology, it is our responsibility to let the world know that God has never left them alone, that God has sent Jesus to us, and that God has sent his favor and mercy and love. But I need to finish our little section here. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he appeals to God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what, did God, what is God's reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal, or Baal. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. Hmm. 
But if it is grace, it is no longer on the base of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. It is the same pattern that God used before that God is using now. He will always save people by means of grace. We sin, we sin miserably, and it is God's grace who reconnects us to himself so that when we see the forgiveness of sins, we see the life and the mercy that God has given to us, and we recognize how wonderful God's life is for us. It is wonderful. It is a wonderful life that we, now that we are experiencing it through faith and grace, want others to know as well. Then that's one of the reasons that these videos are out there. It is by grace that we have been saved through faith. And to quote Paul in another location, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we have been saved by grace through faith, not of our works, so that no one can boast. That's how we are saved. And we serve, but that's another side topic for another day and another time. It's not for today. Today is about sin and grace. And like stiff-necked and rebellious people, stiff-necked and rebellious children, God deals with us by means of his grace always. And through the witness of, uh, of faith and the witness of the Holy Spirit, through the power of this word that we've been studying, your life is changed. So we'll continue this story as Paul begins, continues the, the unification of the new and the old. And it sounds like one of our children is not having a good day right now. Just got here. We'll continue this uh, uh, tomorrow and probably the next few days. So if you like this video, uh, give us a like, give us a share on Facebook, give us a thumbs up on, ya on uh, YouTube. Uh, give us uh, a, a comment, uh, anything that you have that you want to share. Whether uh, If you have a testimony you want to proclaim, great. Let us know, let everyone know by means of uh, comments, uh, either on Facebook or on YouTube. And if you are interested in continuing to receive notifications, please subscribe to our channel, uh, like our page, and um, on YouTube, if you want, the next time the next posting is up, ding the bell. That way you'll know what's coming up next. All right. Well, thank you guys for your participation in our study. I look forward to seeing you guys again tomorrow. God bless. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.